Hi and welcome back to CapTech. It's quite a different world than it was the last time we were able to get together. I mean it's early May in Illinois and it's still a little too flooded and chilly to enjoyably boat. So nothing is unusual there and it might just be me but still something seems just a bit off here in the spring of 2020. Previously on CapTech we've produced several videos focused on boating the Illinois River. But now we have weaved them all together under one digital roof so to speak. Please join us as we play the highlights of our beginner level class entitled Boating the Illinois River 101. Then you'll see our Boating the Illinois River 201 class focused on more intermediate level material. Followed by our advanced class focused on answering your men of viewer questions. That's right folks. Join us for the Boating the Illinois River Master Class. But wait there's more. Not only will your investment of time get you several instructional videos by pressing just one button, we've also included extra super special bonus content as we'll look at CapTech's history of River rescues on our whiteboard animation and educational canvas. Folks there's a word for feature length educational documentaries like this one and that word is Quarantainment. Hello, this video is an introduction to boating and the river scene uh, between the locks in Ottawa, Illinois. So I'm going to walk you through it. It's an introductory video. You know, it's not going to have every little nook and cranny in it, but we're going to roll through from uh, east to west. So I'm starting over here. There's a lock uh, by Marseilles. It is pronounced Marseilles, not Marseille. This is not France. Um, and if you're coming through that lock, um, it's a it's a really neat, you're getting ready to come into a great uh, part of the river. Um, so you're going to boat down here, not a whole lot. And the first place you're going to uh, come to is going to be a plus, uh, place called Red Dog. Now, it used to be a hole in the wall marina called Four Star that all us locals loved. Uh, Chicago money came out, built a place, a lot of uh, expensive homes out there that haven't sold. Uh, but it's it's beautiful and um, they have a good restaurant, good microbrews, it's uh, etc. It's been a, a few different uh, a few different things since um, since it's been here. But it's currently called Red Dog, as you can see. They've got uh, the map right on their page and they're showing you some of their uh, entrees and menu. It's a I wouldn't call it upper crust place, but uh, for the area, you know, um, it's pretty nice. You can bring your dog and sit outside and stuff. Uh, on that note, this picture is taken right outside of there. That's my dog, Dietka, with a cheap beer and some and a lighter, kind of a party star. Then you're going to come up to where the Fox and the Illinois uh, intersect. Um, so that's going to be right here. Um, there's free boat dock uh, parking over there. You can walk downtown and get something to eat. And you'll be able to walk up. There's plenty. You can walk for sushi, Mexican restaurants, whatever you want. It's not really... Um, boating uh per se it's it's walkable from the boating and there's restaurants you can find yourself something to uh, eat or get some booze or a uh, little grocery shop whatever um so it's not it's walkable to the boat but it's not necessarily one of the boating establishments you know what i mean um the next place you're gonna hit is a free or a non um let's say i call it a public island um that's called Moni Moni. Um, and the public island's going to be after you get um, going past the bridge here. The river's going to fork out this way. It's about right here. And it's a sandbar. Might be owned by somebody. I've heard rumors over the years. Uh, but this is a picture of Moni Moni Island. There's me and my, my uh, dog Ditka and the late Napoleon. Um, it's just a sandbar. But it's a uh, place to go. You can camp, hang out, swim, whatever. Barbecue, have a fire. Um, just uh, like a park in the middle of the river. Wonderful. Anyway. Um, then the uh, next place you're going to come to, and that's a little further down, so you're going out this way. Um, there's another lock in Utica, which would be just falling off our map here, about right here. Uh, and right before you get to that lock, a mile or two, uh, you're going to see uh, what's called the Starve Rock uh, Marina. And it has um, a nice website, a little boutique in there. Um, the thing with Starve Rock Marina, they have a, a pretty good menu. It's a ton of fun out there. People dock their boats there. They rent boats. Uh, there's a bartender there named Irma, makes the best Mai Tai. 
probably in the world. I absolutely recommend drinking two of them. Drinking three of them can, can really turn into a hot mess. Um, but they'll, two is, two is where it's at. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's it. That's a tour from uh, east to west, kind of a boating 101 of the Illinois River. Thank you, everybody. Cap Tech will be right back with our intermediate level video after a word from our sponsors. Hi, my name is Gary Clark, and I've owned Clark's Automotive Repair Service off of Route 127 in Nashville for 40 years now. At Clark's, we support the community that supports us. And that's why, in these trying times, we're pleased to offer Southern Illinois a brand new service called Cars on Demand. Cars on Demand offers two distinct services that I would like to tell you about today. First, our fleet service. That means oil changes or other repairs for your fleet of hospital or police first responder vehicles or ensuring that your chickens will continue to be delivered to the grocery store. The second component of Cars on Demand is our brand new mobile repair service. Having a reliable vehicle during a pandemic is an important thing for all of us. You still need food and medicine, don't you? Then in Southern Illinois, you need a working vehicle and we are here to help. For most jobs, we'll come out and do the repair at your home. And for larger jobs, we'll even come get your vehicle and take it to our shop for repairs. And not to fear, we'll do your repair and process your payment in a manner that adheres to new social distancing standards. Ask about our special financing available on larger projects and best wishes to you and those that you care about during these trying times. Please contact us today at 618-327-3022 or reach out on Facebook. Good evening and welcome to Cap Tech. Today, we're going to feature a new video, Boating the Illinois River 201. Although this is the latest video on Boating the Illinois River, it is not going to be the last video on it. So stay tuned uh, at some point in the future, might be as late as uh, early next summer now, um, for even a uh, more advanced class featuring uh, basic maintenance, advanced maneuvering, um, how to select the right boat if you're looking to get into it, and then some questions that uh, arise from this video as well. So let's cover navigational beacons, uh, which you really need to know for boating around the uh, Ottawa area at least, um, is to stay in between the green and red buoys. Uh, keep it between the navigational beacons. If you ever want to uh, venture out and go a little further and boat in some other areas, you're going to want to remember the uh, mnemonic device of red right returning. Uh, but um, in a nutshell, keep it between the red and the green buoys and you're going to be okay. Um, when traveling from open waters, uh, the red buoy should be on your right side. Uh, but um, it's, again, it's not, uh, not gonna matter that much where we're at. So let's move on. Next, let's look at what to bring. You need to bring a whistle if your boat doesn't have a horn. Uh, you need to bring life vests and a throw cushion. You need a battery charger, and I specifically mean for your boat. Um, something to do in case of a dead battery or two. Um, you need a way to communicate. I put a plus sign there because if you're bringing somebody with you, they should also have a way to communicate or you should bring a charger and um, a way to plug it in. I also bring extra gas, ropes, and an anchor. Every time, all the time. Let's talk about the locks. We have one by Marseilles and one by Utica. Um, the Utica one is pictured here, although I did put a uh, picture of the sign of the Marseilles one. Um, when you go through the locks, um, it's fine, it's fun. Um, I recommend doing it. Um, you should know that they do throw you a rope um, and you should know that you typically do have to wait a long time to get through and to come back through as a pleasure boat. Um, I had a buddy um, go to Chicago. It took him 13 hours by boat because of all the locks. Um, so um, it's not um, so much the time of going through the lock, which might take an hour depending on who else is coming in uh, with you um, but it is the time um, that you're gonna wait um, especially for barge traffic coming through that uh, you should be most concerned with so just know that before you get out there 
In Illinois, you can complete the boating safety course at age 12, and you can operate a jet ski and a boat. You can have a designated driver at age 12, and you can take the class online, and it doesn't cost a ton of money, and you get your license within five business days. Next, let's discuss boating etiquette. Uh, here we're focused on the primary rule, which is when the boats are rocking, don't come a knocking. We'll cover the rest next. So I like to build myself these matrixes um, to remind myself what is acceptable and not acceptable behavior. Um, here I've modified that to what is acceptable or not publicly acceptable behavior and applied that to uh, the river between the locks um, and it's kind of a snapshot of our local culture. So first I've got acceptable drinking, smoking, chewing, not publicly acceptable, other intoxicants. So just kind of bear that in mind. Some fancy folk out there might judge you. Um, so you may want to do what you got to do privately. Um, and then we can kind of transcend to the next point here. Um, next thing I had is acceptable was letting folks see a pee. I mean, who cares? You know, I mean, don't, you know, point in the direction of a family or anything, but within reason, people can know that you're European, who cares? Um, not publicly acceptable. Letting folks see uh, see a poo. You don't you don't want that. Anyway, um, acceptable. Treating barges like it was Mardi Gras. Um, those guys are out there a long time, ladies. You got to help them out. Not publicly acceptable. Being prudish. Uh, acceptable. Loud music. You just got a big new stereo. Great. Not publicly acceptable. Waking. So talking about waking um, not only can you not wake where there's signs but you also don't want to wake near boats that are tied off together where you'll get yelled at um, mostly um, no wake no wake uh, not publicly acceptable driving other folks boats only captains should drive their own ships unless of course they're intoxicated but we'll we'll get to that here shortly um, next thing acceptable bringing beer ice and rations not publicly acceptable bringing gas money just bring more beer and rations we you know um, probably you're going to be out there boating if we had your gas money or not but we can um you know a guy that owns a boat always likes to have beer ice and rations you don't even have to ask just bring them um acceptable uh it's a boat dock i'm talking specifically about the large one under the bridge not acceptable fishing dock like there's just not enough places to park a large boat so we usually will try to park somewhere else first but if you're a fisherman um and we're making you um move we it wasn't our intention and we didn't have much of a choice in the matter but we need to park um then i have acceptable beer bongs body shots and skimpy school swimmer i don't care if you're 60 and want to wear a hammock ba uh, banana hammock out there they're not uh, not going to kick you out uh not publicly acceptable pumping out your waste by the beach you know the auto switches to uh get rid of um you know uh number one and number two out of your boat when you're sitting there not acceptable so anyway, I wanted to cover that kind of a um, culture of the river type slide there. All right, pitfalls and pit stops. So I wanted to go over a uh, map of the lot, a map of the uh, Illinois River here. Um, and if you guys can uh, follow my cursor, um, you'll see here, this is where uh, the Fox River and the Illinois meet. And this here, is a wing dam. That means it is a dam that you do not want, that you do not see. Um, so you have to watch out for it. And there's some shallow beaches uh, right around it, like right here as well. For years they wouldn't put up a sign because nobody wanted to assume uh, responsibility. But it will uh, destroy your boat. Do not hit this thing. Um, we also talked about the shallow beach by the high school. Um, the other place where it gets a little rocky um, is along the dock over at uh, H2O. Um, I don't know exactly where that would 
fall on the boat on this map probably right in here but you can park basically if you get to h2o um also known as docks i just park in the middle um of the dock not in the very front of the back um it also gets very shallow up the fox which is clearly labeled on here i have heard people going all the way up to the dayton dam but only during flood conditions on uh, small boats not a great idea um let's talk about private islands um so Moni Moni Island is a public island, I mean, at least used by the public frequently, and it is uh, where I have my cursor circling right now. There's a nice, uh, there's another uh, island across from it, but I do not believe that it's technically public, although I haven't seen any, but when you called out on it. Um, and then um, Bulls Island, you'll have private boat clubs there, although during these two, um, between these two islands here, a lot of people uh, tie out on their boats, um, and it's kind of a, a little bit of a party cove, also known as Bob's Beach, also known as the Lagoon. Um, that is about it. Um, it does get a little, uh, uh, shallow to the left of the river up here, um, under some of these train bridges. So you'll want to stay to the right on those. Um, and then, um, I also wanted to talk about pit stops. So on each end of the river, one that caught, that kind of flows off my map here to the left, um, and one um, right over here um, on this side of the Marseilles Lock and Dam. Um, so you'll have um, two marinas where you can get gas. Gas is more expensive on the river than the land, not, uh, not horribly so. Um, you can also get food at them um, or um, rent boats at them if you're from out of town. Um, so those two marinas are Starve Rock Marina and... Um, the other one which is called uh, Heritage Harbor. Next, let's look at our advanced video. But first, a quick commercial break. R. Do you suddenly find yourself with plenty of time, but lacking the supplies to complete your craft project? Well, not anymore. Just reach out on Facebook to our house interior Zocaville, because we now deliver. If you need custom-made stained glass, reclaimed barn wood, or other supplies for your crafty project reach out today and schedule a home visit. While adhering to the new normal of social distancing we'll swing by with a selection of crafty supplies so that your craft project can continue while the rest of the world is on hold. Pay as little as half down now and we'll send you a no interest invoice for the balance due after you go back to work and life returns to normal. From our house to yours we wish you good health during these unprecedented times reach out to our house interiors on Facebook today. Hi, and welcome back to another episode here on Cap Tech. Today we're going to talk about FAQs. No make that FA Cruz on the topic of South Central Illinois and the Illinois River. This video is dedicated to the 85 bears because it is the 85th video in our series. I'm joined this weekend by a buddy of mine who I shall conceal the identity of, but many of you shall guess. I um, want to take this buddy down to the Peoria Riverfront uh, via boat this weekend and document that for the channel. Um, but when I asked uh, my old man if um, he thought that was a good idea and wanted to join us, he kind of poo-pooed the idea because even though weather was fine by us, it was not uh, um, very good in Peoria. So with that, we came up with the alternative um, uh, video topic of um, talking about FAQs on South Central Illinois and the Illinois River. One question we get a lot on the channel is, what are the boundaries of this South Central Illinois? So I've listed them here and put uh, South Ottawa in a giant blue dot. I would call Ottawa the capital of South Central Illinois, but that is a disputed fact. Um, I would call the uh, southern capital to be Nashville, Illinois, both uh, considered wonderful places, you know. Um, so that speaks to the geographic boundaries. I will not uh, touch directly on the ethical boundaries of the area, so you uh, don't have to be alarmed. Another question I get frequently on the channel is, Cap, take me through the various uh, marinas and docks. So I used to dock here, it's a nice place, 
known as Stokes Marina, kind of a campground. Um, it's not expensive, but doesn't have a lot of services. Next, you see the Shoreline Club. You have to know somebody. I know a couple people, but neither one really seemed to want me over there either. So we're gonna keep going. We're not gonna uh, go the other direction here out to Heritage Harbor, because we're not uh, millionaires from Chicago. So we'll keep going down this way. You see, uh, we're going a little out of town on the Illinois, giving you the um, overview, and you'll get to see it from the uh, river itself here shortly. Um, right now we're getting close to uh, Buffalo Rock. The next um, place we're gonna get to is the Star Rock Yacht Club, um, which is also a private club. You uh, would have to work some hours in there and get approved and such, but uh, seems like a fun group of people and um, might be able to get in there if I sweet talk to a few folks. But um, where we landed this year was a little further out at uh, Star Rock Marina. Um, where they do have uh, services and you can leave your, uh, you know, leave your boat in a little longer um, in marinas as well. Um, but that kind of gives you a small overview, um, you know, of the uh, various marinas, at least in the locks between uh, Utica and Marseilles, Illinois. Another question I get a lot to the channel is what makes a great boat dog? And what I'm gonna tell you doesn't make a great boat dog, at least in my experience, was a hunting dog like a Greyhound or a Weimaraner. I love them, but they were just overly excited out there. So now I manage this by getting a uh, large, um, fat, lazy, sweet dog who doesn't seem to um, need to swim across the river every time we stop at an island. A Mastiff is a good breed for this. My next question came in from my Patreon page, and it was from Johnny Clean Shoes, who said, how would you have entertained without a boat? And to that I say, I would have went to the Bear's Den, got you a sandwich as big as your arm, and then took you to see some buffalo, and hopefully ran into the darn cheese lady somewhere. So it's not like I didn't have a freaking backup plan. Scene Snark from Nashville, Illinois asks, Tell me about the festivals, Cap. Okay, well we got a Morel Mushroom Festival. We have a craft beer festival from like local brewers, and then we have a larger microbrew festival. And then we have Riverfest, which features bands over the years, such as Eddie Money and Herman's Hermits, etc. Um, so anyway, it is a plethora of fest uh, of festival, a plethora of festivals along the river, and uh, you can Google what goes on uh, outside our locks by uh, looking at Peoria and such as well. But um, yeah, here we have the Wine Fest, which also has Lobster Fest added. All walkable to the river with plenty of docking, usually. I say usually because there's been a few floods this year. So now, you asked, uh, we had somebody submit, what's your most amazing river story? Well, I'm responsible for three lives out there. I pulled a couple older people out of the water. Um, one time when I was actually out on uh, Moni Moni doing a phone interview, I said they were gonna buy me steak, but I never did see them again. They were just kind of floating, it was odd. Anyway, and then also I do believe I conceived a baby out there as well. So that would be three lives uh, total if you wanted to count it that way. So that's, those are my most amazing river stories. Next, from Picky Pete, we get the question, any errors and omissions you want to speak to from your previous videos? And I say yes, if I've ever said anything to annoy Angie, even if it was about something, you know, very minimal from 30 years, 20 years ago, yes, I'm absolutely sorry, Angie, I did not mean to do that. Um, and then also, I left uh, the Blue Room in New Minden off a list um, of top bars, I felt bad about that. And then also on my list of uh, being almost famous, I forgot to mention one of my good buddies and great fans' cousin was on the Rams, Mr. Jeff Scanina. So that's like, you know, two degrees of separation from some NFL stuff there. So anyway, that's all I got on uh, errors and corrections. I don't think everything's been perfect to date, but those are some things I wanted to cover. Next question. Additionally, in the Vegas video, the uh, Mob Museum 
is uh, up north, you know, by Fremont, not on the south end of town. So I was just given that last second correction. But uh, other than that, you know, those are the only uh, those are the only things I have regret about. So please enjoy this view for a second while my assistant cues up the next question. The next question comes in from the doctor in Radom, Illinois, and it says, is it true that you are throwable, uh, unthrowable from a tube? And it turns out we tested this one extensively, and I am not unthrowable from a tube in general, just unthrowable from my own boat. Here we have another question from Twitter, uh, from Chewy Pearl. What craziness happened this weekend while you were hosting your friend? Well, let me tell you. We went out to have dinner in Verona, Illinois, and he goes out to have a cigarette. My wife goes out there to say hi to him and, uh, you know, talk to him for a second while he's having a cigarette. This girl comes up and, like, shows him her boobs, both of them, and then says some, I don't know, sexy stuff or something to the old lady, to my wife, and then, and then moons both my friend from out of town and my wife at like six o'clock on a Thursday night. Like who, I can't believe it happened. I, it, it's a wonderful thing. What a great conversation piece. I'm happy it uh, happened to my friend while he was visiting, but that's, uh, that's the best story I got from this weekend as far as uh, oddities that happened to him. Next, do river pe please bother folks by Paranoid Peter. On the Illinois River and Fox, I would say, you know, if you use common sense that they're not uh, gonna be too tough or harass you. Um, however, however, on like Austin's Lake Travis or Arizona's Lake Havasu or Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri, they tend to be a little tougher because they know you're there to party. So just keep that in mind. The next question is from Johnny Vegas. How does river boating differ from lake boating? Well, on the lakes, you're not gonna see any barges. Uh, you're gonna have much deeper water at a lake here, like, at, you know, at a lake like this one, Lake Mead. Um, and it's uh, just kind of a whole different vibe. I don't know how to encapsulate that, uh, that answer any better for you. Uh, but uh, we like lakes too, such as Lake Carlisle and Ren Lake. Next question. How does South Central Illinois compare to other tourist traps? Well, it's no Grand Canyon, Mojave Bob, but we do have a lot of attractions, such as Mathiasen State Park, Buffalo Rock State Park, and Starve Rock State Park. Some cute towns like uh, Utica and Ottawa where you can get a good bite to eat, and then uh, the river, of course. So, you know, there's a lot to offer, you know, and uh, it's hard to uh, hold yourself up compared to the uh, one of the wonders of the world here, but, um, Let's not forget that it uh, could be worse. Anyway, next question. The next question came in from Quid in Shantytown who said, hey, have you ever lived out outside of South Central Illinois? You stinking moron cap? To which I say, yes, I have. I have escaped to the uh, South and lived in such beautiful places as Austin, Texas. Uh, my buddy currently lives out in uh, Las Vegas, so although we do venture out of the area from time to time, it, um, South Central Illinois is the center of the universe and documented as Da Motherland. And from Austin, Texas, we have the Depth Finder asking, what's the furthest that you've ever traveled by boat? Well, the furthest I've traveled by boat would be almost to Peoria, to the south from uh, the Ottawa area, which is, uh, you don't have to go through uh, as many marinas as uh, going to Chicago, which must have been a dozen marinas, um, which I uh, was able to do with a few friends of mine, a couple of which bailed along the way. It really turned to an adventure, and it did wind up in the uh, boat fire that I cover in some previous videos. Um, so that's the furthest, uh, furthest I've gone. Thanks for asking. Now let's get ready for special bonus content better known as the gravy, but first a preview for our upcoming motion picture.
Hello, and thank you for watching another episode here on CapTech. Today, we're going to look at the greatest maritime rescues that I've ever been involved in. And since this is the 87th video in the CapTech series, we're going to dedicate it to Bear's Great number 87, Tommy Waddle. So I try to rescue people. I see them out in trouble. Um, if for no other reason than to uh, make up for, you know, bad things, you know, that I've done before. Um, I just figured that it's uh, good karma and just downright exciting. I mean, imagine being a hero like this guy right here, except on water. So the other day, the wife and I are out sitting on Moni and a uh, couple came and broke down and no big deal. Uh, we towed them to uh, Allen Park, but it got me thinking about great stories of river rescues or water rescues of the past and how I could tell my stories about them. So I've got a group of friends that are always asking to be uh, in the videos and they really wanted to uh, tell the stories that they've experienced and heard about. So I'm going to have them all speak to you and give you testimonials about um, these various maritime rescue missions. Enjoy. Hello kids, I'm Johnny Vegas. I came to visit Ottawa a couple of weeks ago. We went for a boat ride to Money Money Island. It was fun until this guy called and said he needed a tow back in. It turned out that this guy needing the tow happened to be a mechanic. But that didn't stop him from threatening to throw a can of beer at my head. I heard he needed a tow again a week later. Next time I come to Ottawa, Illinois, I'm wearing a helmet to go boating. Hi, I'm Paris. CapTech took me boating one day when I was homesick from school. His friend was stuck on the other side of the lock east of Ottawa, Illinois. It took like four hours to rescue his friend. I puked. It sucked. Am I done with this yet? Hi, I'm Angie O'Gale and Josh is kind of my hero. This one time he was on Money Money Island and these old folks drifted by after a flood. Josh pulled them into his boat and dropped them on land just before a very important conference call. This is stupid. I am CapTech's cranky friend Johnny Raincloud. I visit from Springfield when I cannot find better stuff to do downstate. I know two of these stories. Once someone gave up when towing Josh mid-tow when their rope broke. The second was the time that a bunch of old guys towed Josh and his buddies and but these old geezers proceeded to yell at young Josh the entire time. Not even sure I believe these stories the folkies probably had reason for yelling at Josh. I mean Josh talks sound to me. Hello to the huddled masses of Ottawa. My name is Obi Juan and I was Josh's attorney among other things during the real estate boom. One day I took my client on a tequila bender early and then advised him to go into Lake Michigan in an 18 footer. It ended explosively in a boat fire the Chicago police came to get us out of the lake after we had to jump. We got on the news that night. Josh saved my life by putting a life vest on me before throwing me in the lake. My client is a hero your honor. Captain Ron here kids. I tried boating from Wisconsin to Florida in a canoe even though I am a senior citizen. I spent time on Money Money Island and Josh brought me beer and bottle openers so I would not get the scurvy and I. Alright, now aren't you guys glad that you watched this video? Thanks so much for watching Cat Tech Quarantainment. You have now completed the boating the Illinois River Masterclass. Please subscribe to Cat Tech. There's nothing else quite like it. Thank <laughs> you.